So this was a project I was hired for recently as a colorist from a client of mine named Deja, who's an incredibly talented musical artist based in the UK. And her requirements were, she of course wanted to look good. She wanted it to be a realistic looking color grade. So not too filmic per se. And she wanted it to be vibrant and bright. And while I normally grade in Color Finale 2 Pro, which is a lesson that I will include in my color grading masterclass, today, since I know the vast majority of you probably don't have the plugin color finale we're just going to create this look with the tools in final cut so the music video was shot in entirely one location which made my life easier as a colorist because then i could focus on creating one grade for that location instead of having to maybe think about what type of grade would work best for what setting and lighting scenario. And in this instance, it's one location at this racetrack. However, the time of day made it somewhat tricky. So there were no external lights that they brought in. It's all natural sunlight, which doesn't always look the best, especially being that this was shot around, uh, I think she said around 3 p.m. I think they had access only from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So it's not even the best type of natural light that you can film during. But nevertheless, we're going to make it work. So because the footage that they handed over to me was shot in a log profile, the first step is converting to Rec. 709. So in Final Cut, you'll head to your effects browser, You'll double click custom LUT and you, you're going to want to download for whatever log profile you are color grading. You want to make sure you have the specific log profile to Rec. 709 input LUT that was created specifically for the log profile you're working with. So in this instance, this was shot in S log 3. So I have an S log 3 to Rec. 709 input LUT. You may be asking, where can I find LUTs like this? Usually you can find them for free on your camera manufacturer's website. You can download them. There's also third party ones that you can download as well. But using an input LUT is so important when you're transforming log footage because you don't want to be going in and adding the contrast and saturation in manually by using your color wheels. This is a surefire way to change the look of the colors in your video in a negative way. So use an input LUT and you may notice that with this input LUT that we've added that it looks terrible. Don't worry, we're going to go ahead and fix this. Something to note is when you add your input LUT, just take note of if any part of your shot looks like it was blown out. So because the input LUT, all it's doing is expanding out from wherever your shot is sitting as far as exposure. So let's press Command 7 to bring up our scopes. We'll switch to our Luma waveform, which solely measures brightness. And a little tip that you can follow when transforming log footage is notice where the trace of your log footage is sitting. Most of the time, you want to get this trace a little more centered towards the middle of your Luma waveform at about 50 IRE. Because if not, like it's sitting, for example, a little bit higher here, pushed up a little bit more than center, and that is what's causing some of our shot to blow out. So for example, if I really zoom in here and let's find part of the shot. So just notice right in here, luckily we don't have a lot that's being blown out. But if we look at his ring, you'll notice that it's blowing out some detail here where we are clipping our highlights, thus erasing detail in this area. And you might think, well, we can just add another color wheels, we can lower the brightness, say of our highlights. But the issue is, if you make an adjustment, after your input LUT, so if the layer is after this input LUT layer, you will never get this lost detail back. The key is to make the adjustment before the input LUT. So if I undo this and we add this before the input LUT, we can follow that tip that I suggested. So go to your global exposure slider, which adjusts the brightness of your entire image and just lower the overall brightness of the whole shot till it's closer to the center of the Luma waveform at about 50 IRE. So then, when we add our input LUT, boom. Now we don't have as much, oh, we actually do have a little bit blowing out. So let's lower it just a bit more, right about there. And so now we have a shot that is much better off, it's exposed much better, and now our shot is ready for contrast, 
and saturation, which is the next step in the process. So let's go about adding that contrast and saturation. So let's add another color wheels. And whenever you add a new correction type, it always goes at the very bottom of your layers, which is the most recent. You have the most recent layer at the bottom, the oldest layer at the top. So this one is after the input LUT. And we're gonna expand our dynamic range by lowering the brightness of our shadows till it's closer to zero IRE. Going past zero is going to remove detail from the darkest parts of your areas. You're gonna crush your blacks. So we don't wanna do that. Scrub through and just make sure there's not a part in the shot that's a little darker. There is right here. So we'll just raise this up. So it looks like we're gonna get most of our contrast from our midtones exposure slider. So let's lower our midtones a bunch and just bring this down. Something right about there I think looks good. Now, oftentimes what you'll do is go to your highlights exposure slider and expand out your dynamic range more by raising closer to 100 IRE. But you shouldn't always do that, and here's why. In certain instances, there might not be enough bright things in the shot. The shot may be pretty dim as is. And so by raising your highlights, you could possibly be raising the exposure of your subject's skin. And skin generally should lie within a certain range, which is around 25 or 30 IRE to around 75, 80 IRE. So if you happen to raise your highlights, potentially you are overexposing your subject's skin. So we can crop into per skin here, just to double check. Uh, there we go. Try forehead. Looks like we are a little bright. So we can hop back into that color wheels and let's actually reset the crop. And we'll just lower this a little bit. Just have it sitting just a little bit lower. And next thing, let's add our saturation in. So let's bump up our global saturation. And remember, she wants this to be saturated and vibrant. Not crazy. Um, I think we are probably making the reds and the yellows a little bit too saturated. Usually those are the colors. Those are the hues that tend to gain way too much saturation if you just adjust your global saturation. But... We'll take care of that in the next step. So let's go ahead and add a hue sat curve and we're gonna start tweaking our colors a little bit more to help fit a style. We don't want it to just be a standard Rec 709 conversion. We want it to have some punch to it, even though she wanted it to be a realistic look. So let's go to our hue versus hue curve, which adjusts the color of any color you choose. And we're gonna start to create a little bit of a complementary color look. If you don't know what a complementary color scheme is, it's when you have a color grade that draws on two colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So that could be red and green. It could be purple and yellow. It could be orange and cyan, orange and blue. And by including these two colors, whether that be through adding that color to the overall color grade or by tweaking specific colors in the shot already, you can create what is called color contrast, which basically gives your shot more depth, or at least it appears to give more depth. It adds more punch, more pop, and just helps to create a better look overall. It's very common in Hollywood and blockbuster films, and for a good reason. And so for us in this instance, we're going to go ahead and select the blue with our picker here, and we're going to change the color of this blue to more of a cyan color. And if I bring up our vector scope, you'll see what this does exactly. Notice what I think is right in here as I push this up, which is changing the color of that blue. And you'll notice this just compresses all that blue more towards cyan. So if I turn this off and on, you'll see that this just gives our shot more of a stylized look, but it still looks fairly natural we can now take care of that yellow and red. So let's use our hue versus sat so we can adjust the intensity of color in whatever color we want. So we'll lower the intensity of, of the red and maybe even the yellow, but we need to make sure that we don't select her skin, which is gonna lie in the orange. Something right about there. We can even in increase the green a little bit too. Okay, 
And the next thing I'd like to do is use the hue versus luma curve, which lets you change the brightness of whatever color you want. However, this is a curve not to be taken lightly because you can absolutely tear apart your shot if you make too big of an adjustment. So very minor tweaks with this curve. So we'll select this green, maybe even make a smaller selection and just bring down the brightness of our greens here. And I just like this look better. This is just a personal taste of mine. And the last thing we're gonna do, I like to add another hue sat curve just so I know what's what. And we're gonna go down to our luma versus sat and our sat versus sat. So first things first, we're gonna take out any saturation that we happen to push into the darkest areas of our shot. So use the picker, select, you can select right here. And this is gonna show up at the very left. This is the darkest area of your shot, your black point, goes all the way up to the very brightest areas of your shot, this is your white. And so we can just lower the saturation of our very darkest parts of our shot by making a minor drop off here. This is going to, this is a surefire way to clean up your image, especially when you happen to make a lot of tweaks. You happen to push in a lot of color into areas of your shot. And the, one of the final things I'd like to do is go to your sat versus sat and increase the saturation in the least saturated areas. So by pushing up here and decrease the saturation of the least saturated, I'm sorry, decrease the saturation of the most saturated areas by lowering here, just making this slight drop off, maybe even a little bit more. And I actually may lower the saturation of our very darkest areas in our shot just a bit more. Okay, something right about there. And final thing, I just would like our shadows and lower midtones just to be a little darker. And let's double check that her skin is an accurate color. So let's crop into her skin. And we could probably do a little bit better. So skin should always fall on this line, which is the skin tone line. Not always, of course, like every rule, it's meant to be broken. In a lot of stylized looks, skin may not be on this line at all. In fact, sometimes it may be in the opposite direction, but for a realistic natural look, you want skin to be at least touching this line. And we need to do a little bit of a better job here. So we can hop back to either one of these hue sat curves. It actually doesn't matter. We'll go to hue versus hue, select. We gotta make sure this is deselected. We'll select her skin. And we are just going to change the color of her skin here by swinging this so it's on the line. Just a small push, and that sat does the trick. That works for me. The last thing I want to show you, in case you want to add a fake Pro Mist filter look, is this little effect or little trick. And this is something that I added into the music video color grade initially, into the first draft. But when I sent it to Deja, she disapproved. She didn't like kind of the dreamy feel of it, and she wanted it to be more realistic. But nevertheless, I still want to show you guys in case you want to add something like this. So you duplicate your clip by holding Option and dragging. And then what we're going to do is go into your effects browser. You're going to type in Lumakir, which is a free effect in Final Cut, and you'll drag it to this top clip. Now, just so we can see things a little bit better, I'm going to press V to disable this bottom clip. We'll head to the top clip and make sure that only the brightest things in this top shot are selected by dragging this bottom slider here. And maybe leave it right about there, I think. And then you'll head back into your effects browser. You'll go to blur, go to Gaussian blur and double click. And now what I like to do is bring the amount down to only a few points, maybe eight, and then bump the blur boost up a bunch. And so if we enable this bottom clip by selecting and pressing V again, you'll notice that now we have this dreamy look around the edges of our shot. And it kind of helps to diminish some of the harsh edges. And you can go in and tweak this if you find that it 
doesn't fit what you'd like. You can go in and uh, affect the Luma keyer to get a certain look. It just creates this dreamy look that I like, but certain clients of yours or other people may not like it. So it's a personal preference, but I just thought I would teach this to you. If you learned some new tricks in this lesson, then you will learn way more by enrolling in the FCP Color Grading Masterclass. So I'll put a link in the description to the website. I would highly suggest at least just checking out the website. If you enroll you will greatly benefit from it. I promise you that. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.